So when we're talking about, we were talking right now, up till now, mostly about our reward markers, right? Conditioning the sounds that predict reward. Well, we also have to condition the sounds that predict punishment because commun our communication system has both sides of it, right? And operant conditioning, we have two forms of reinforcement and two forms of punishment, right? I'm gonna talk about this a little bit today as well. The difference, but we, we tend to think about dog training. What's happened in, in the dog training world is the reward-based trainers have grabbed two of the quadrants and the traditionalists have grabbed two of the quadrants, right? And so what happens is the reward-based trainers are talking all about using positive reinforcement and negative punishment. The giving and withholding of rewards, right? Denying of reward is a form of punishment. And the traditionalists talk about negative reinforcement and positive punishment. I think it's the wrong way to look at it. We should look at it as the forms of reinforcement together and the forms of punishment together, right? So we have two ways of reinforcing behavior and we have two ways of punishing behavior. Reinforcing behavior means, just means the behavior is more likely to occur in the future. The behavior itself is a good thing, right? Punishment means it's stopping behavior. Whatever you did is a bad thing. There's a consequence that you don't like that happens, right? So the two forms of reinforcement, positive reinforcement, you do something and I give you something you want, Negative reinforcement, I applied, there's discomfort being applied to you or something you don't like being applied to you. You perform a behavior and it stops, right? So the traditional way that we taught sit was negative reinforcement, right? And if I teach that right, I pull up on the leash. That's uncomfortable. I don't say anything, right? I pull up on the leash. The dog's like, that's uncomfortable. I say sit and their butt drops and I shut it off. Now sit is still a good thing. Right? It stopped discomfort. Sit can be a good thing because it predicts something you want. Sit can also be a good thing because it stops something you didn't like. So the two forms of reinforcement are for creating behavior and the two forms of punishment for not. Punishment could be you did something I didn't like, I applied physical discomfort to you. I yelled at you, I yanked on the leash, any number of things that the dog doesn't like. Anything I apply to you that you don't like, positive punishment. Right? I can also deny you access to something you want. That's punishment. It's like docking your pay. right? You did something I don't want, nope, you don't get this. Got to try again, right? And so that's what we call negative punishment, right? So in the early stages of training, I'm using mostly, I'm using negative punishment. I'm not really using positive punishment. So one of the things about our punishment markers too is they, ha they have to be conditioned on the job. We, condition we can condition reward markers in isolation. We cannot condition punishment markers in isolation. Meaning I can take my dog out, he's doing nothing, and say, yes, feed him, yes, feed him, yes, feed him, over and over again. You can't take your dog out and go, no, smack, no, smack, no, smack, when he's not doing anything wrong, right? <laughs> you can, but he's not going to like you anymore. He's going to be really a mess, right? There are people out there that are advocating for this. They're advocating for conditioning their punishers in isolation, right? But it makes the dog super twitchy and jumpy. They don't want to be around you, and they don't have any place to put that information. So any aversive experiences have to be connected to something the dog's doing. So normally, the first place I condition my punishment markers, it's with negative punishment, right? And so there's two ways of doing this. Some people will use one punishment marker for negative punishment, for withholding reward, and a separate one for positive punishment consequences. So somebody might say wrong or uh-uh for, uh, for negative punishment and no for positive punishment. For instance, like I'm going to apply a consequence. I usually just use the same one, and uh, it just evolves over time. Because in the teaching phase, I'm not correcting you with, with positive punishment. I'm just denying you. But it's, it, it's not a bad idea to have two, right? And the first one I condition is my negative punishment marker. The place I usually condition it is at the crate door. So I have the dog, and I, the young dog's learning to come out of the crate. And I say, wait. And I start to open the crate door. And they want to come out. And I say, nope, and close it. I start to open the crate door. They start to come out. I say, nope, close it. What do they want? They want out. They hear the sound and I take what they want away from them, right? It's a perfect place to condition it, right? Sometimes I condition it with young dogs. I'm doing food work, and they want the food that's in my hands, and they jump up on me, right? And when they jump up on me for the food, I just say, nope, and pull it back and pull it behind my back, yeah, that kind of thing. I usually, with my young working dog puppies, don't really care if they jump on me, so I like the enthusiasm, and unless they're really obnoxious about it, I use other spots to do it, but that's, that would be the spot that I, that I would do it. And then as I go forward, of course, eh, I can up the consequences as necessary, right? And later in training, my dog does something they're not supposed to do. I say no when they do the wrong thing. I withhold reward and then I make them do it over again, right? And then as necessary, I think, hey, you understand this, right? 
and I said, no, you didn't change your behavior, then no is followed with another consequence. But a, a smart way of doing it is to have them both separate, right? <laughs>